Hey everybody, it's Lon Seidman. We're taking a look today at a USB switch box that I've been using for quite a while and I never got around to reviewing. This is from IO Gear. They've got a couple of different versions of this box at varying prices. The one I'm using is their 4x4 unit, which takes in four USB 3 devices on the front here and then lets you send those devices to four different computers. Now only one computer can use it at a time. Uh, but I have found this to be really useful in my secondary office upstairs because I use three different computers up there and it's nice to be able to have a single keyboard and mouse available to me and then I use the monitor to actually switch video. And the reason why I went with this versus one of those USB-C KVM switches is that I'm using varying degrees of resolutions. Some of the devices I'm connecting don't have USB-C or Thunderbolt, and I found it was pretty easy just to hit a button on here and then a button on my monitor and do the switching. And I'm gonna show you how this box has been working for me in this video with a couple of laptops and my Mr. FPGA computer. And we're gonna dive into this in just a second, but I do wanna let you know in the interest of full disclosure that I paid for this with my own funds. All the opinions you're about to hear are my own. No one is paying for this review, nor has anyone reviewed or approved what you're about to see before it was uploaded. So let's get into it now and see how this device does what it does. So let's take a closer look now at the hardware. This is actually a pretty simple device. As you saw at the outset here, you've got your output cables here that go to your PC, and then you plug in your USB devices here in the front. Uh, this does come with most of the cables that you need to get started. So all of the cables that output back to the PC are included. You get four of those, one for each device that you are connecting to the box. And then what you're going to do is plug in your USB devices into the ports on the front. Now, these are USB 3 ports. I've been using a keyboard, a mouse, and a webcam, which is what we're going to look at today. But you could pretty much connect any USB device to it, although I would be careful about using USB hard drives because when you do hit the button to switch to another computer, it disconnects everything from the computer that it was on and connects them to a different one. So if you were writing stuff out to a disk and then hit the button, you're gonna have some problems with your drive there. So I would stick to mostly input and output devices like webcams, keyboards, mice, and that sort of thing and directly connect your storage. Now you're gonna notice here also that there is an, another USB port right here and this is for providing power and I would suggest you use this. Now they don't give you the cable or the power supply in the box. This will, with a keyboard and mouse, work without the need for power and will get its power from the computers it's plugged into. But you will have better luck with uh, keyboards that maybe have a backlight or something uh, with some USB power going into this. And you can use just your standard micro USB cable and a standard USB charger to get that power in. And I've been using this to get all my devices working properly on my computer. And again, I would suggest hooking that power up just to give yourself a little bit more of a power budget to work with. Now you switch between devices with the little switch button here. You could stick this to something or just leave it out on the desk. And every time you push it, it'll cycle between one of the inputs. And you'll see this working in a minute. Uh, this plugs into uh, the back of the box right here. So what we're going to do now is get a couple of computers hooked up to this and my little Mr. device. We're going to attach the keyboard and mouse and the webcam and we'll see how the switching works on this and then we'll play around with a few other things too. All right, I apologize for the mess of wires and equipment on my very small desk here, but we're going to make the best of the situation. Uh, so what I'm going to do first here is plug in this uh, keyboard and mouse into the front of the, uh, the switch here so we can get those going. and. We'll plug the mouse in, again, into one of the USB ports. It's pretty simple to get this going and use it, actually. It's very self-explanatory, as you'll see. And I've also got a webcam here, so a little bit less of a traditional device, but I've been often switching between my desktop PC and my MacBook for conference calls, and it's nice, again, just to have it all on the single unit here and getting that going. So I'm just going to put the webcam on top of my monitor here for a second to get that out of the way. Now, the other thing I'm going to do right now is bring in some USB power to power this. Again, this is optional, but I think it's something you should probably do if you have some extra USB power cables kicking around. All right, so now it is on and operating. And what I'm also going to do now is start attaching these USB cables to the computers. So I'm going to start off with uh, the cable in the first position here. Uh, so this is position one. And I'm going to just plug this into the side of our Windows machine here. This is the little Surface Laptop Go we reviewed a while back. And just plug it into its USB port. 
And right now, um, the switch is in position 1. And you can see that it's lit up in position 1. And so if I uh, go to the Windows screen here and just uh, start typing on my keyboard, you can see that it's already recognized the keyboard here. And we're just typing away. And we're getting uh, stuff on screen. The mouse is working already. And we're pretty much good to go. So the next step is I want to connect my Mac, which is also on the desk here, uh, to the second position. So I'm going to grab its cable. And cable management is uh, not my thing, so you might want to uh, you know, do better than I'm doing right now. <laughs> and of course, the Mac only has USB-C ports, so you could use an adapter. I've got a little Thunderbolt hub here that I'm going to attach it to. So now we've got the Mac connected, but we're still connected on the switch box to the Windows machine. So I'll just type out, this is Windows. And now if I hit the button here to go to position two, and then I start typing, and you can see how quickly all this stuff happens here. The mouse is working just fine. And if I want to go back to the uh, Windows machine, I have to cycle through position 3 and 4. And then I'll go back to 1. And now back oops, on Windows. And then I can hit the button again and go Mac. And that's it. So pretty quick and easy to get between these devices. But you can see how dangerous it might be to have a storage device on this because you're switching uh, between these things and basically cutting off the other computer. Let's take a look now at the webcam. All right, so we're on my Windows computer right now. The camera on the top of the monitor is shooting me, and we're running this camera through the switch box. And what I'm going to do now is go back to our two-up view, and I'm going to switch the USB switch box to the Mac. And when I do that, we'll see if the Mac picks it up. It probably will here in a second. Sometimes I have to go and coax it uh, on the camera menu here. But if I go over to uh, cycle the camera, we'll go back to this one and then go back to camera two. You can see now the webcam is working here. So you can likely get this to work with webcams. You may have to reset and hit the button again to pull the camera up. But it's a pretty seamless process going back and forth. And for good measure, we'll go back here to uh, the Windows computer, and I should see an icon here pop up, and I can just do the switcheroo, and there you go. We can get all of that working. So next, I wanted to show you the workflow that I have right now when I'm using this upstairs. So right now, I've got my Mac here connected. We're moving the mouse around. We can type on the screen. Everything is good. But I also have my Mister here booted up, and I have a whole playlist on the Mister and what it does, so definitely check it out. But basically, it's a great way to run old computers and old game consoles in a very accurate way. And what I do is I switch the switch box over to the mister into position 3 here, which I just did. And then I go to my monitor, and I just select the input that the mister is connected to, which is HDMI 2. And there you go. And I can just start typing away and do my basic coding or play around with the Commodore 64 or all the other uh, cores that it supports. The mouse will work also in cores that support the mouse. And it's very quick and easy to just go back to this and say, all right, I got to get some work done now. We'll go back to the Mac in position two, go to the display here, and just select the display port input. And then we can go back to doing all of our work on the Mac. So yeah, it's a two-step process for me where I've got to switch the switch box and then switch the monitor. But it isn't that bad. And again, there are switch boxes that will do the keyboard video and mouse. But I found for the mix of things that I'm often switching, uh, this box seems to be the better solution for me. All right, one last thing to check out, and that is what the maximum data throughput of this device is. It's basically a USB hub with a switch on it. And of course, this is the USB 3 version that should run faster than the USB 2 version of it. Now, I know I said I don't recommend attaching storage to it. I stand by that recommendation. But to test throughput, I'm going to connect one of my fast USB solid state drives to position 4 here just to see what kind of speed we can get moving data back and forth. On my Mac screen here, you can see that it is picking it up as a 5 gigabit per second USB 3 device. So that's a good indicator that we might get some good speed here. And I'm just going to click uh, Start on our Blackmagic Disk Speed Test. And I'm not getting the kind of speed I get when I plug this in directly to my computer, but it's not bad. We're doing about 200 megabytes per second on writes and about uh, two or 300 here on reads which again is not the full potential of this drive, but it's certainly good enough, I think, for devices that might require a little bit more USB bandwidth. But again, I would not rely on this for that. Uh, but if you are switching something between computers that does push a lot of bandwidth over the USB bus, uh, this will get you somewhere near what you might see typically with USB 3.0 speeds. So 
Just a quick look at this I.O. gear switch box, something that I've been using quite a bit upstairs and I just never got around to telling you about. And it's a nice little part of my workflow up there and it's really useful for me and I hope uh, you found this interesting. That's going to do it for now. Until next time, this is Lon Seidman. Thanks for watching. This channel is brought to you by the Lon.TV supporters, including Gold Level supporters Brian Parker, Jim Peter, Tom Albrecht, Frank Lewandowski, Mark Bollinger, and Chris Allegretta. If you want to help the channel, you can by contributing as little as a dollar a month. Head over to lon.tv slash support to learn more. And don't forget to subscribe. Visit lon.tv slash s.